It can be hard. It can be irritating. It can be scary. It can be so, so intimidating. It can be uncertain, but you have to push all of those thoughts, all of those negative thoughts, all of those thoughts that are hindering you from moving forward and actually doing it, whatever it is for you. You just have to learn and accept the fact that you will have to do it alone and do not be afraid to do it alone. I can only speak about my experience. I can only speak on what I went through. And a lot of the times I'm I'm always in auto mode. I'm always just go, just go, just go. And I know it stems from how I grew up. Like seeing my mother going through what she went through as I was a young child. She was always on auto mode. You know, she's foreign. She came to the U.S., with me, because I was born in Haiti, and you have a child, your husband's not in the U.S. yet, you're on auto mode. You don't know the country. You don't know the language. You have very a small support group because her dad was here. Well, not here in, in Dubai, but in the U.S. But you're an adult with a child, She had no choice but to be on auto mode. And that just was automatically instilled in me. It wasn't as though she told me to make sure I'm on auto mode. It wasn't as though she sat down and taught me this is how it's supposed to be done. I just seen she was always on auto mode. So that's what I was supposed to do in order for me to live, in order for me to get through life to always be on auto mode. And she just never stopped. Never, ever stopped. So me growing up, me being young, me going through adolescence, me going through young adulthood, and now a full-blown adult, I just know to be on auto mode. And I don't see that as a bad thing because that definitely allowed me to get to where I am now. And this auto mode actually helped me bypass a lot of BS that was swung in my face. So I am so grateful I was always on auto mode. And throughout the entire time, I never realized I did one thing consistently until now that I'm here and I'm just breathing. You know, when you're underwater and you're just swimming and swimming and swimming and you know this is normal this is normal and then you put your head up out of water you're like (sighs) and you finally breathe that's how I feel like right now in this stage in my life I feel like I finally took a deep breath and everything is just quiet everything is just calm I mean you know life happens life be life and but I'm not on auto mode anymore. And I realized everything I did, I did it even if I had to do it alone. And I love that for me, (laughs) to be honest, because I feel as though, like I love people, y'all. I really do. I know on the web, it may look like I'm very like stern and, uh, you know, my demeanor is, uh, but the people that know me, the people who met me, I'm, I'm, I'm a sweetheart, y'all. I'm nice. Um, but I don't like having people just hold me down, weigh me down. And I didn't realize that was an actual, is it a trait? Is it a trait? A characteristic? A thing. I didn't realize it was an actual thing 
until throughout life, I realized a lot of people just stayed on the same level, stayed in the same position in life because they didn't have somebody to do it with, whatever it was. You could be a single mother and you don't have somebody, you don't have that partner to raise the kids. That's the it. So you feel as though you sit in the same position every year, not growing, barely, not saying that you, you know, you're not dying, but not saying that you are diminishing or retracting or losing steam, but you're just there. Whether it's a job or career where in order for you to go to the next level, do the next big step, in the career, you have to have somebody who's there to cheer you on, to to push you to push yourself forward or put your best foot forward, to ask for the raise, to ask for a better working condition, whatever it is. Whether you're in school and you know you could pass the test, but if you don't have that study buddy, then you just rather not study or your mind get lost somewhere else and you just not motivated. Whether you're at the gym and you're trying to lose weight and you rather not go and work out because you don't have a gym partner. You don't have somebody there talking to you every step of the way in order for you to do that extra rep or go walk or, or I don't know, whatever else you could do in the gym. <laughs> But for me, I realized, be, me being on auto mode, I just did not put any emphasis on somebody having to be there in order for me to accomplish anything. Growing up as a Haitian American, I don't know, I say um, Haitian, Haitian, because, you know, once your parents come from another country, you still within that country. They still at like... They living in that country for the first good 10, 15 years of them being in the new country. Like, culture is there. So, growing up and coming from a very Haitian background, a very foreign background, um, you know, there are the, you must, you must go to school and you must accomplish this and you must accomplish that. You know, this is the way these, these are the careers you take in order for you to be successful in Ozetazuni in the U S and my mom did, you know, she's a nurse, she's an RN, she did her thing, but she was never the one to tell me this is the only path you can be successful in. Over time, as she got educated, as she became more westernized and more modern, she realized, yo, there are definitely way more opportunities out there than just this one pathway that she grew up with. I was about to say, I talk about her, that she grew up with, and that's not just the only way. So coming from that background, she never pressured me at all to be like, all right, you must be a nurse. I did not know not one person that wanted to be in the dental field. And I didn't know anybody that was in the dental field. It was, it's just something that I know I liked and wanted to be a part of. So guess what? I did it. I didn't need a group of community to tell me this is the right way. I did my own research and I tested it out. Every time I went to the dentist, I was like, all right, this is something I really could see me being a part of, an environment I could be a part of. I did not have to have somebody hold my hands and tell me, what career or trying to figure out what career I would enjoy or is best for me. I just did it. Not knowing if the, if the 
income that is on the internet is the right income or none of that. I just went into the field doing YouTube. Did not know anybody when I first started who was doing YouTube, who was putting themselves out like that on the internet. Had no type of mentor or anything. I just did it. Me moving to Atlanta. Didn't know not one person in Atlanta to show me around, to give me the the background or, you know, the pros and cons of Atlanta. I did my research. I was like, you know what? I feel like here in Atlanta would be a good step. Step for what? Really, I don't know. (laughs) I just knew at that point, let me just try something different. I was young. I moved to Atlanta when I was, I think, 24, either 24 or 25, I think, yeah. So I was young. I did not have any kids. I was not married. I was like, you know what? Let me just try. If it doesn't work out, I'll come back home. It's totally fine. My mom and I have a really good relationship, so the door is it's always open. So I did that, not knowing anybody, not having a job. I was doing content creating, YouTube, Instagram, all of that. But I quit my job in Orlando as a dental assistant to move to Atlanta just to try it. And it did benefit what it needed to do. Atlanta, Atlanta. (laughs) when it needed to. Um, So I never realized I was always on auto mode and I never realized I just did things without needing somebody to hold my hand to do it. And I feel as though a lot of people just, and I have friends and this is literally one of the reasons I'm speaking about this because I still have friends who I speak to on a regular who are still afraid and who who are just who just does not want to do something if they don't have a partner or if they don't have somebody to help them or somebody there to walk with them through the process and I know it can be very hard and intimidating. I guess it just depends on the type of person that you are. And being that I never really needed that person, maybe because I'm the oldest as well. So I always had to set the lead, be that uh, example for, and just like lead the way. All the trials, tests and trials, trials and tribulations, it went through me first. So maybe because I was always in that mode, I was like, you know what? Doing a a next step in a life, it never seemed too daunting for me because it's always just like, all right, if it, something happens, it either it's supposed to happen or, you know, it's just life. I can never control it what's going to happen. So why would I sit back and stay in one spot year after year, time after time and not br- try anything new at all? Not at least try at least try. I mean, what we come on this world to do just to stay in the same situation over and over? Absolutely not. So I really didn't realize I was like that until when I moved to Atlanta and I didn't tell anybody like always and so let, um, you know, only my, the people around me, my close family and friends. And then when people realized I left, they were all confused. They're like, how you do that? You know, your family is in Orlando. How in the world? Like, what, girl, what? And I'm looking like, I mean, I just moved. First of all, it's just an hour of flight <laughs> from my home, from Orlando. You feel me? So it's not that far. And if I can't flight, get in a car, a six-hour drive, it's nothing. You know, maybe because, you know, I was a military brat and moved around. So I'm like, an hour, six hours, that's not far. 
And then I moved to Dubai, made the decision to move here, which is another bigger step. Like I left comfort. I left somewhere where everybody I know is. I know absolutely no one here. And I did it without needing somebody to hold my hands and tell me, come to Dubai, come here because I'm here or because um, I know so-and-so did it. Like, no, knew absolutely no one who did it. I didn't care to know anyone who did it because at the end of the day, every step that I've done in my life, every phrase in my life, if it was me and God, honestly, he always gave me an idea and it's up to me to execute. I ponder on it. I pray on it. I think about it. Those still moments when there's no distractions around me, it's me really thinking. And it's not overwhelming. It's not suffocating. It's just a stillness. It's like, all right, am I doing this? I, I, I outweigh the pros and the cons. Am I really going to do this? How is this going to benefit me? How is this going to improve my relationship with those around me? But most importantly, if I do this, can I be on my own and be okay with it? And every step of the way is a yes, I can, because it's me and it's God. People will come and go. That's just the way of life. So I cannot sit and be stuck in one place if I have the urge, the finance, the ability, the mindset, the courage to try something different, to try something new, that is not going to be detrimental to my future. So I come to say, try and try and try to put your best foot forward And try to not have to lean on one person or a group of people in order for you to elevate your life. I could truly and honestly say at this moment right now is um, when I'm recording. The amount of peace, mental peace that I have being here and it I mean it could be I could be anywhere right I could be in Bali I could be in the Caribbean I can be in Africa like I could be anywhere it's the thought that me stepping and making that first initial um decision without having somebody holding my hands is what really have brought me to a sense of peace in my life right now at 29 years old. I feel like when you always have somebody there to try to um, get, not saying, okay, let me, let me <laughs> disclaim this before people think something else. I'm not saying don't have a support system. I'm not saying don't have somebody you could consult and confide in. We definitely need that. We need community. We need people. I mean, we were born out of people. We are around people all the time. We need it. I love to be around people. I love to have that type of um, interaction, people interaction, entertainment, all of that. But I feel like a lot of times, a lot of us do not move any further in life because we are too afraid to do something on our own. We try to hold on to something very, a lot of times can be very, very bad for our life. Like it does not benefit our life at all. We try to hold on to it because we think if we let it go, 
we're going to be in a worse position than we are in now. There are a lot of people who are in either a relationship or a marriage, for example, and they just hold on to that relationship or marriage as hard as they can, even if they are going through the mud, the worst of the worst, be feeling belittled. But they stay in it because they're thinking, if I let this go, I'm going to be even worse. And I've seen time after time again, people have definitely let something go with, well, how do you say, like, like urgh, begrudgingly. And once they let it go, they're like, oh my goodness, if I knew this, I would have let that thing go a long time ago. If I knew this peace, this release, of pressure on my chest, this these headaches I get every day, worrying about this relationship, worrying about this it. If I knew I would get so much more peace, I would have let it go a long time ago. I see it every day. I know it's hard to be mentally intertwined with such trauma like that, such a situation where it's impossible to see your life beyond your situation. And that's where the community comes in, where you have a good you know, community, a group of people around you who are telling you, yo, it's better if you just let it go. Like, I see you tearing up all the time. I see you in heartaches. I see your kids not properly respecting you because you're not good to yourself. You're always combative, you always have an attitude, if you just let this go, you've done years with holding on to it and it has brought nothing. It doesn't only have to be relationship, of course, it could be an addiction. It can be um, something that you've had for such a long time, probably like a trauma that you had since you were little. It could be anything. But that's why you surround yourself with, you know, good people to be like, yo, let it go. I've seen when you're happy. I've seen when you're content. And I've seen when you're not. And this is when you're not. Let it go. But they're so afraid to let it go because they don't want to do it by by themselves, whatever it is. I realize my best travels have been my solo travels. Not when there's a group. I did one group trip, you know, back in college. And I was like, never. <laughs> never, never say never. I don't like saying never. But I'm like, mm-mm. Mm-mm, 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 It's not worth it. Um, then I've done trips where it's just me and another person. Have I done me and three people or two people? I have. I don't think I have. But... I realize the best trips I have are the ones I am on my own because I don't have to worry about any, you know, extra things going on. Being still, being quiet, and not having to lug somebody else's problems all the time in every step of the way of your life. Like, you know how exhausting that is? To always carry somebody else's burdens on top of your burdens. Like, yo, I'm not Jesus. I'm not Jesus. I'm not trying to grab anybody's cross, and I do not want anybody to try to grab my cross. You know, that's what he is for. <laughs> so I feel as though a lot of people definitely need to realize it's okay to do some things, a lot of things on your own. Just try it. If it doesn't work, go back to square one. We're all going to go back to square one sometime in our life. But this fear of not wanting to progress in life because you either don't never seen the example or you don't have a group of people around you, like you don't have an entourage in order to pump you up, in order to make sure you, you, you know, go step by step, little by little, like... This message is for those people who are like that. Just just try it by yourself and see how it goes. Because this fear is crippling you. 
And a lot of the times we do not have good discernment to try to figure out if this person that is even trying to help us or that is there with us is even, do they even have a good head on their shoulders or are they even giving good advice? For example, you're my like, oh, I want to start up a business. And you're so eager to start up this business. You see it can be profitable. You have the means to start this business up. Even if you don't have the means to start it up, your, your energy, your passion towards it, like you, that adrenaline is so potent that you're like, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to go through this. I'm doing this. Like, I'm excited for this. But yet this person is like, no. So because this person is like, no, you're going to not do it. Because this person who is so close to you says no and probably doesn't even have a valid reason why they're saying no. Because they do not see you as a business owner, because they don't um, they don't think you're qualified to be a business owner or to to work in whatever field that you want to work in. So you're just going to stop? You're just not going to do it? It it doesn't even have to be only one person. What if multiple people? You got your five bestest friends around you. Ten bestest friends. Twenty bestest friends around you. And you voice this, this idea to them. And they're like, girl, no. So you're not going to do it because there are so many people, people around you that says no. Stop allowing other people to try to be a crutch for you to walk through life. And I say this all the time for, with those around me, to those people I talk one-on-one with. We were born into this world on our own. We are not attached at the hip with anybody. Another person's opinion is just that opinion. It's not fact. If God puts something inside of you, a vision inside of you for you to do something, Who is it for somebody else to say, nah, you're not going to be good at it? Who is it for somebody else to say, nah, not right now? What? How are you going to tell me not right now? You don't know God's timeline. You don't know the vision. You don't see the vision. I'd be like, nah, that won't be good. But he's given me the pathway for me to do something. He's given me the direction, and I see it. It's not going to be easy. I'm going to be crying. Blood, sweat, and tears are going to be pouring. Heartache. But for you to tell me no, and you don't even have a valid reason, Why are people allowing other people to do this to them? I realize I've always been on autopilot, auto mode. And that's just because why not? I'm trying to get something done. In order for me to get it done, I just got to do it. And I don't know, maybe because I live here now, it's like, like I said, it's like, oh my goodness, I don't have to be on autopilot. I still have to work, of course. (laughs) I still have to make sure I have my ends met, my basic needs met, of course. But I don't have to be on autopilot. And I'm glad I did it without having somebody 
there to discourage me without having to feel like I need somebody to tell me, oh yeah, this is a good idea. Oh yeah, this is a good job. You know, I don't need those affirmations because the only affirmation that I got that I needed initially was the one that was placed on me in my heart to do it, to place in my head to do it, the idea. Those are the only affirmations. And I'm glad I was never the type of person to be like, oh, I have to see somebody else do it in order for me to know this is the right way to go. I've always been in my own lane. I've always remained in my own lane. And I've never been pressured to adapt to somebody else's lane or just swerve into somebody else's lane. I've never felt that. Because I've always seen everybody as an individual, and I've never really put everybody in one group. And I don't ever want anybody else to put me in one group. I take everybody as how they show me, right? If you are um, coming to me and you have a stink attitude, I'm going to take it like that. I'm not going to be like, oh, because your mama have a stink attitude, that means you must have a stink attitude. It's, I don't see it like that. So I don't like putting everybody in the same box. And I wouldn't want anybody to put me in a box. I, I mean, listen, actually put me in a box. <laughs> put me in a box. Sleep on me. It's fine. Sleep on me. I don't got no problem. Because time and time again, you will be shocked. Of my next move, 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 <laughs> of my next move. Even me, I'd be shocked on my own next move. I'd be like, what? Girl, how, how did I get here? Time, because I don't allow anybody else to dictate how I should move, where I should move, or put me in a box. And I feel like when people put that much pressure or that much emphasis on somebody else's opinions about them, whether this is right for your life or this is not right for your life, or you must do this, that's that's the that's the thing I got a problem with. That must, that must, like there is no other option. You must do this. There's no other option. You have have to stay in Atlanta. There's no other option. You have to stay in Orlando. It's like, why? I'm that, I'm that child that always asks why. Actually, as a child, I didn't always ask why. You know, growing up in a, a Haitian household, asking why is very like, mm, PT. But as an adult, oh, why? Why not? Why not? What am I fear of failing? We all going to fail. That's how you learn. That's how you grow. That's how you get more abundance of whatever you're trying to go for is via failing. Being embarrassed to failing, everybody fails. There's not one person that doesn't. So um, before I could go on on another rant, let me go ahead and close off with saying what this topic is about, which is do it by yourself. It's totally fine. Do it by yourself. It's going to feel lonely. It's going to feel like a lot of pressure. But I promise, I don't like saying promises either because, you know, who knows. But a lot of the times, (laughs) you will come out the other end like, why didn't I do this earlier? Why didn't I just step out on faith and do it by myself, even if I didn't have that business partner, even if I didn't have a mother to teach me this way, even if I didn't have a friend to help guide me 
do it by yourself. And it's totally fine. It's okay. I'm here to tell you it's okay. I wish a lot of females would do a lot of it by themselves. And like I said, I'm not talking about like having a community or anything. I'm just talking about if you have an idea, if you want to start something, or if you want to raise your child, it's okay to do it by yourself because a lot of the times we bring a lot of people in and we're thinking that person is going to help us, that person is going to elevate us, and that's just not the case. They tend to make it worse. They tend to be more of a burden than a help. Um, they tend to discourage. Girl, just do it by yourself. It's fine. And like I said, if it doesn't work out, then find that right person to be to have in your corner for you to um have that support for for them to help cheer you on. You know, if you need a cheerleader, but do it by yourself. And I realized every step of the way, as I was on autopilot, I was just doing it on my own. It was literally just every idea is just between me and God. And I would tell my mom, like, this is this is what I'm about to do. <laughs> to be honest, it wasn't more of a... When I, having those, when I was having those conversations with her, it wasn't more of a, um, oh, what do you think? It was really like, this is what I'm about to do. And saying, telling your Haitian parent, this is what I'm about to do without asking for permission or asking what they think is, is a big thing. But um, nah, nah, my mom knows I have uh, discernment. So <laughs> she was like, all right, girl. Super supportive, but it's okay. Do it alone. Um, do it alone. <laughs> do it alone. It's okay. That's what I had to say.